So the Carolina Panthers finished their season at seven and ten. Um, a very interesting season as we think yeah. back on it and, and yeah. recap what all happened. Uh, starting off with just there was a lot of there was an upbeat feeling, I would say, from Panthers fans because what we were sold was Matt Rule normally turns it around in, in year three. And so you're expecting to win the, the winnable games, starting mm-hmm. off with Cleveland. That didn't happen. Nope. And then you have uh, the New York Giants. That didn't happen. Nope. And then you did win the Saints game. And then you lose to the Cardinals. And then there are other. So it's, it's like, so when, when is the winning going to happen? And um, Matt Rule's fired. That's Steve when the took happened. over. That's son of Charlotte. Happened. <laughs> that, yeah. And that's when it happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're right. That's when it happened. Um, and, and Steve Wilkes goes six and six in, in his final mm-hmm. stretch. Um, more games. He won more games as the interim head coach for the Carolina Panthers than what Matt Rule ever won in a single season uh, as the head coach for the Carolina Panthers. Matt Rule's you know, has never gone more than five games. He's won 11 games since he's been here. Steve Wilkes uh, had six yeah, in 12 games. Um, so just overall thoughts of the season before we start talking about the future. What are, what are your thoughts from this past season, Dennis? You know, early on, things were looking pretty bleak, and then Rule got fired, and then they lost that first game right out, right out of the gate after he got fired, which – it's understandable because you have a head coach with, with Wilkes. I was like, okay, you have five days to get prepared. Here we go. Um, so it doesn't surprise me they lost that game, but they made it interesting. They actually made it intriguing because mm-hmm. the rest of the division was so bad. Here's yep. the thing, seven and 10, they still only finished one game back for one in the division. <laughs> had they beat Tampa Bay, have they held on to win that game? Yeah. We're talking a completely different story right now. Completely. We're like playoff game at Bank of America. That's literally how close they got. But obviously they're not. They're going to be picking in the top ten. Uh, but it was in it was uh, an indictment to I think of Steve Wilkes and who he is as a person and a coach to see how the players responded to him. Yep. And I think that's probably the thing that stood out to me most was guess what? Coaching matters. It you does. can have all the great talent in the world, but coaching matters. And you have to just the hand that he was dealt at Steve Wilkes. Mm-hmm. First off, taking over a team. Um, that had no life, not a lot of identity to it, um, no culture, even though Matt Rule thinks he brought some type of culture here. Um, you know, that's his delusion. And then the, the, the organization trades away Christian McCaffrey, your, your mm-hmm. best player. Then, uh, you know, of course, they, they get rid of their, you know, number two wide receiver, which, you know, he needed to go. Yeah. Um, Robbie Anderson. And then, of course, you get rid of uh, Baker Mayfield, which, you know, that's understandable, too, because he was third on the depth chart. So it's not like he was going to be there to start or anything. He'd already shown what he was and what he wasn't um, with us. And then you had all of these injuries, key injuries, too, like Dante Jackson, like J.C. Yeah. Horn, to where you have to bring in a Josh Norman, who was making coffee for people three weeks ago. Um, and, and now, you know, you're expecting him to cover Mike Evans and cover Chris Olave and, and guys like that. So um, it's, it's very interesting the hand that Steve Wilkes was dealt and still to go six and six. Mm-hmm. And we heard from David Tepper at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of uh, Steve Wilkes' tenure, and he said he's going to have to do an incredible job for him to get the job. Yeah. To me, that is incredible. Yeah. You know, I, I just don't think that, you know, making the playoffs by itself is just incredible. If you think about the different things that Steve Wilkes had to overcome and that he got these guys to focus on and to go forward. I mean, even within that game, you lost Brady Christensen and Austin Corbett in the last game uh, who were very important on that offensive line, the offensive line that had almost no, you know, uh, injuries throughout the whole season besides Pat Elfline. And that was actually an upgrade when he got out (laughs) and Bradley Bozeman came in. So when you're looking at it, as David Tepper has a decision to make on who's going to be the next Carolina Panthers head coach, Steve Wilkes, to me, has to get at least two years. You gave Matt Rule a a seven-year contract. Give give Steve Wilkes two years. If he can't cut it in two years, cut bait. Give him two years. You gave Matt Rule a seven-year contract. Yeah. (laughs) And he didn't live up to anything. Mm Mm-hmm. Give, Matt, give Steve Wilkes two years. Give him two off-seasons. This upcoming off-season, off-season 2024. If he doesn't cut it, 
then cut bait, move on to the next person. But at least give him that opportunity because the guys that are in this locker room right now, you have a chance to re-sign some guys who already feel strongly about Steve Wilkes. You have a chance to probably bring in other guys. And if he can do that with the guys here, he can definitely do it with some new guys and some newcomers. So, you know, at least bring him in. And we suspect Tom Brady is going to be out of the division next year, which means that this NFC South is going to be up for grabs. Oh, yeah. And he was one game away from winning it. Exactly. Even if he is (laughs) With this squad. So give him two years. Just at least give him two years. And I think that he could be an amazing head coach for the Carolina Panthers. So the report is that – because even though he's the interim head coach, he does have to still interview because it's just the the hiring process with the NFL. So Joe Person of The Athletic reported that on Tuesday, which we're recording this on a Monday, so depending on when you're watching this. So on Tuesday the 10th is when – Steve Wilkes is set to interview for the job. Here's how the interview should go. I'll be David Tepper. All right, Steve, who do we need to hire on your staff? That's the extent of the conversation. <laughs> That's all the conversation needs to be. There's the interview. That's it. Yeah. Who should we go to hire on your staff? Yeah. Offense corner, defense corner, everything else. Yeah. Who do we hire? Who do we need to go get? And that's the part we didn't even bring that up. Like he also like the the coaching staff was bare bones because some guys left to go with Matt Rule to Nebraska. Some guys were fired uh, after Matt Rule uh, left as well. And so it was like you had a bare bones coaching staff and he still was Mm -hmm. able to do that. Exactly. So, yeah, that's that's the extent of this interview. That's what that's what it should be. I I think I think Tepper's obviously not going to give him a seven year deal. And I totally agree with that. Yeah, you can give him two years, like sign, sign a sign a three year contract. Yeah. All right, sign him a three year contract because after two years, okay, you could buy out that last. And Tepper's got no problem buying out money. Trust me. Yeah. The guy's got plenty of it. Yeah. But yeah, give him that chance. Give him a three year contract and see where it goes. But yeah, give him an off season to sit there and figure out what he wants to do. Now, some people might sit there and say, well, he might be too conservative as a coach. Blah blah blah. Nah, he gets those dudes ready to play, and they're in games. They're in games with chances to win. And again. The roster, which we can get into a little bit later on, and some key pieces just weren't great. Like well, quarterback, not a great situation. Sam Darnold continuing to prove he's not the guy, even though some yeah. Panthers fans were like, after however many games, were like, yeah, he's the guy. No, he's not. But the whole thing is that he has an opportunity to build a team, build the staff the way he wants it to be and the way he knows can be successful. Yeah, I, I mean, otherwise, who else are you going to bring in? Harbaugh? And I, and I, I know I, Harbaugh's name got floated around. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's go two tight ends, fullback, and a running back. Pound the rock. Come on now. And, and I, I wouldn't even call Steve Wilkes conservative. When you're trying to get a team who clearly, when Matt Rule was trying things that just didn't work with this team, mm-hmm. and I, I think he he sat back and he looked at it. We have a good offensive line. We have some running backs in that room who can do a really good job. Let's run the, let's run the rock. We're having a hard time right now with quarterback and getting the ball from the quarterback to the wide receiver. As we develop that chemistry a little bit more, we'll air it out more, which is what he's, he's done um, in, in recent games. So I don't, I wouldn't call him conservative. That's why I say, give him two full off seasons. I will say this um, with the other names that have been floated out. You, you said Harbaugh. I hope he's not. Um, yeah. the Panthers coach just mainly because uh, Harbaugh feels like the person who's always looking for the next thing. Yeah. He doesn't feel like he'll, he'll be that guy that could potentially be with the Carolina Panthers for the next 10 years. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that's what I, what I would like out of this hire is who's going to be here with the Carolina Panthers until 2035 ish when my daughter is going to be graduating high school. She's oh. in kindergarten. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like that's that's kind of what I, I what I'm looking for. Uh, Steve Wilkes has that capability. I think Frank Reich has that capability. Mm. Um, another okay. name that's been floated out there, uh, Jim Caldwell. I don't necessarily think I want Jim Caldwell as the head coach, but I wouldn't mind Jim Caldwell being the OC. No, no, because all. he's shown an ability to be adaptable. Um, in his time in the NFL, he's he's done a really good job at his different stops between. Uh, Wake Forest, Tampa, uh, Detroit, you know, when before Detroit had their resurgence this year, their best years recently was under Jim Caldwell. Yeah, it it wasn't, you know, Matt Patricia wasn't anybody. It was under Jim Caldwell when Detroit looked like they were about to turn that corner. He just didn't have the uh, GM to match 
his coaching capabilities. Mm-hmm. Right now, uh, Detroit's coach, his name slipping my mind right now, Dan Campbell, uh, Dan Campbell uh, has the GM to match you know, his coaching. So yeah. it's, it's working, it's harmonizing. And, and Jim Caldwell didn't have that. And I, w- I think Jim Caldwell deserves an opportunity. Um, and if Steve Wilkes is the, uh, the, the head coach, hire Jim Caldwell as the offensive coordinator. I think it'll go extremely well, honestly. I'm 100% for it. Here's here's one concern that I have. I know we haven't talked about this yet. You know who's on that lawsuit with Brian Flores against the NFL? It's Steve Wilkes. Steve Wilkes. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's going to hold, think that's going to factor into this in any sort of way? Um, that is a, a great part of this conversation. I don't think it should because David I don't Tepper think it should either, but that doesn't mean it can't. David Tepper comes from uh, the the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, right. That's that's where he first uh, learned you know ownership and and what it's like to to be an owner in the NFL. The Steelers, who is your team growing mm-hmm. up, has been one of the most forward fa- facing franchises that there's ever been. Yeah. The Rooney Rule comes from. The Steelers and what they've been able to do. Who did the Steelers hire this past offseason as their linebackers coach? Brian Flores. Who started the whole lawsuit. Brian so Flores. it doesn't shock me also mm-hmm. that David Tepper, who comes from Pittsburgh, also decided, hey, Steve Wilkes needs to be here yeah. just in case. So I don't think it'll have a huge impact, honestly, because if you look at the job he's done – First off, it's it, I think it's a huge indictment on Arizona and how bad Arizona was was being ran to only give this guy one year mm-hmm. and to not allow him, if people remember, they didn't allow him to choose his own staff. A lot no. of it was holdovers from Bruce Arians. So he couldn't do his own thing there. So they only won one game, and you're going to blame it on the head coach and get him out in a year. I don't blame him for being a part of the lawsuit. Now you look at it. The man still didn't have his own staff. Look what he did with the nice roster. I wouldn't yeah. even say a nice roster, a middle-of-the-road roster. Look what he did with a middle-of-the-road roster. He mm-hmm. almost made the playoffs and only had a chance to coach in 12 games. Yeah. So um, I think if, if David Tepper is looking for the proof and the pudding, it's right there. Just look back at your season. Look at where, how you felt after week five and how do you feel right now after week 17. There is week 18, excuse me. There is a, a lot more hope right now after week 18 than what there was after week five for the Carolina Panthers.